Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. We are so close to getting the engine out of this old F-350 and sliding the engine and transmission from this fella into this old Super Duty over here. We're taking two junk trucks and trying to make one decent truck between the two of them. That's it for an intro. Let's go ahead and get started. I think the last few things underneath are just the engine mount bolts. I already got one off of this side. We got one more to go. And then the two on that side. The last day we worked on this, which was just a couple days ago, it was like 20 degrees. It's 50 degrees and sunshiny today. I'll take it. Ground's still just a little wet though. We are right up in there. That one's already off. That one started, but we gotta get that off the rest of the way and then same thing on the other side. This is the disclaimer I gotta give at the beginning of all these videos. Remember, I'm not a mechanic, I just can't afford one. We're doing this for fun. I'm kind of making it up and learning as we go. So, here's your warning, not a how-to. My neighbor's got his wood fireplace going. It smells so good. Oh, Woody Burns over there. Man, it smells great. Oh, let's go left. Let's take it off there. And if you're new to the channel, one of the reasons we're taking the engine and transmission out of this truck is primarily the rust. Cool feature though, you can look up through the floorboard and uh, it's easy access to change the fuses if you need to. Neat. Not too bad. Okay, let's see where we're at over here. That. Very nice. Oh, where's my tools? Where's the sock? Oh, come on. I got it. I got it. A lot of the times when I'm done with a tool that I know I'm going to need in the next five minutes, I just throw it as far as I can, you know, just to, just to keep the project challenging. You don't want it to be too easy. Okay, yeah, that's going really well. Oh my gosh. Why are we doing this? I'll try to give her the old boot scoot here. Let's let's flip her back to a breaker bar though, huh? Oh, that's going. Uh, pretty sure we're breaking. Pretty sure we're just breaking. But you know, it's a much easier angle coming from the front like this. She's on the move. Well, it's not the ideal situation, but you know, it's off there. Well, there's that one. Just because there's no reason to fight it. And yeah, we're gonna be using the backhoe boom, sands bucket. We'll go ahead and just get that hood off there and out of the way. Show cables work good for keepers. They just they don't break. Hitting there slow but sure. What can you guys even see? Oh, you can see it. Okay,
engine and transmission are clear, but I still got the PTO pump hanging out back here. Remember, I couldn't get her unstuck from the back the other day. I figure we just take her along for the ride. Guaranteed nothing has fallen down inside of that. Spotless in there. Guaranteed. All right. Like I was saying, I'm gonna get this PTO cable off. It's the last thing connected to the truck. Now I'm gonna get this tucked in the barn. We got rain coming in the next few days. The next video is gonna be working on the third function kit on the Ford 555. So the plan is to kind of go through this, see what parts I need, get them ordered. I'm pretty sure for the time being, I'm just gonna do a starter because that starter is pretty rough on there. It's rotted through pretty much halfway around. I mean, it still works, but I don't think it's gonna work for much longer. And I'm gonna go ahead and order just a couple new engine mounts since we have it out. And then while we're working on the Ford 555 third function kit. Hopefully those parts will come in. And a couple of videos down the road we'll be able to slide this thing in. But what we're going to do the rest of this video is start getting that truck ready to receive this thing. So taking the front clip out, it's got a radiator and oil cooler in there for the diesel that was in there. We got to get that taken out. We got a few odds and ends that we got to do on that rig to get it ready. And then we kind of need to go through this truck. I think we got to do some dash swapping. I asked on the last video why I wasn't using an impact to take a lot of this stuff out. Well, the simple answer was all my batteries were dead. But today, a little different story. That's got a big old crack in it. Not the end of the world, though. That's definitely something I can weld up. I mean, it'll be covered. Nobody's going to see it, you know. That'll be fine. Oh, easy, 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 easy. All those tabs are intact, so that's good. I do think the master's cool on here, but we're going to be scrapping this piece anyway, so I don't think I'll be putting a master on the new one.
There she goes. All right then. Oh, making this up as we go is neat. Might have to fabricate something up to get our radiator to work, which is smaller unless we just use that big one. Definitely something to think about. Gotta get that figured out, okay. See, there's a mouse nest down in the corner. Held a ton of moisture. Yeah, those aren't biting anything. Yeah. Okay, neat. That's fine. These on there, hand look, this side looks great. Looks like I gotta undo these battery boxes too. They seem to be still attached to something. These clips are always so annoying when the tops of them rust out, they don't hold. I don't know. It is what it is though, huh? I think maybe we're a little more free now. Oh yeah. Now this one will torch out and beat out later. See where that one's rotten. It's kind of hung up on us. We're not going to use any of this old, or this newer, I suppose, wire and harness. Take all that out. Go ahead and get that out of the way. This part makes me nervous because it's just a complete guess. But that's okay. I've guessed and been wrong before. I think I can take this all the way out, remove the whole harness, and maybe be pretty close to just putting the other one in. So here's a whole lot of what I can only assume is pretty expensive and crucial wiring. Now I get to see, try to get the wiring connection out of that one, deep down in there. up some rust reformer on her. Now they got these little notches here so I'm hoping that it's a directional type thing because I sure as heck didn't pay attention to it. So it's a new day and I did some research on it. It looks like we got to replace the wiring 
from the bulkhead or the firewall all the way back inside the cab as well, the cluster and all those harnesses, which should be okay because in theory we've got everything on that truck. So let's get to it. So let's see what we're working with in here. I don't know if you can smell the inside of the truck from where you're at, but it's 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 fine. Everything's fine. I'm sure there's some stuff we could cut and splice and leave and make work, but honestly, if we know we got the full harness on that side, then we can just put it in on this side and we don't have to do all the guessing stuff. We can just get it ran and be done with it. That's where my mind's at on anyway. I need a little screwdriver. I think this we can probably just get rid of that. Looks like something is just spliced in there. Yeah. I think it'd be better off coming from this side. There's just a couple tabs all the way around. I think if I push them, then I can shove that on through. Oh, look at there. Well, now what? I gotta get everything worked down to it, I guess. I feel like we're missing a lot yet. Okay. I got some harnesses down on this side that run towards the back of the truck. I think if I undo these, that's undone. We're just gonna have to work our way across and get everything unhooked so we can pull this whole dash out. I think if I take these couple bolts out right here and drop this column, it's gonna make my life a heck of a lot easier. Let's go take the dash out of the other one and uh, see what happens. By the way, I'm learning this cab floor isn't quite as good as I'd hoped. It's still way better than the other one, but I think there's gonna be some welding in our future on this one. I'm hoping I can just pop that. Retainer clip. Very nice. Cool. Oh yeah. Very nice. There we go. This is not a how-to channel. We've been over that, but I don't know where all this stuff is. The only way I'm figuring it out is I take stuff off, then I wiggle it, and I peek, and I try to figure out What's holding it from that point on? Wiggle and peek. That's my only tip. If I were giving tips, which I'm not. I just about got it, but I got the PTO cable bracket. I gotta get that undone and then we can take this out and look at it and see how similar we are from this to that side. And we may have to switch over that pedal assembly as well. So 
So we're on the gas side of things. I think this harness right here is supposed to be this right, well, right here. But it appears to be broken on this one and I don't really know. I'm sure a fella could fix it. It also looks like it's interchangeable though. So I'm gonna see if I can't swap that over real quick. Looks like it has everything to do with, put the key in here, operates this mechanism. And that's going to slide up and down on different connectors as far as getting things to start. I'll see if we can swap that over. All right. Check out some of the duct work on this thing. It just crumbles to nothing. Well, that's crazy. I'm just gonna pull this whole box next. It's just different enough that, well, I'll just put the other one in because it's not in bad shape. They're both about equal, and this one's actually full of a mouse nest, so it needs cleaned out anyway. All right, I'll pull her off, see how hard that is to swap out right quick. I'm just giving it a healthy yank. I don't know if it's the right way. Oh, I see what happened. Okay. Well, how are you supposed to get that back on? Okay. Struggling a little bit with one of these weird designs that Ford has. I, I don't know. See that nut runs on that? Well, that continues back to the inside. It's the same on that one as it is that fella right there. And then there's just nothing that holds it on this side. It just free spins. I feel like it was probably molded into that. Well, yeah, you can see there's almost like a carriage bolt molded into the plastic. But it's broken on both trucks. So, I don't know. Find some vice grips, maybe. It's a neat trick. A great design, really. It looks like there's another. There we got it. I think I want to swap that fan over to this one. It just looks to be in a little better shape, but just out of curiosity, I want to see if either one of them actually turns. We're just going to put a little voltage to them. Well, that one works. And to think I thought that one looked better. Yeah, that fan doesn't sound near as nice as this one does. Listen to that. That fan sounds smooth. But before we put it in, I need to get this cleaned up a little bit. And I need to track down some of this, which is pretty common. Get some of this material so we can get her all sealed up. If we're going to put her back in, let's put her back in about, I don't know, 87% correct. I'd say it would be a good, good percentage there. And the heater core that came out of... The diesel had nothing in it when I took it out. And it's got a little corrosion on it, which tells me a little bit of the story. And this one still had fluid in it, and it looks relatively clean in there. So I think I'm going to keep that old heater core too. I might price them. If they're not too crazy expensive, this would be the time to swap it out, just to swap it out. And I may throw some water or something in this and just let it sit on a desk like that for a little bit and see if it does leak. Because if it doesn't, it wouldn't be the worst thing to keep around as a backup. 
But I believe we're going to use all the old components, or all the components off of the gas truck onto the diesel truck, because they honestly, surprisingly, they look to be in better shape. Another thing I need to grab off this one before I forget, and I'm going to go ahead and take the throttle cable that came with it, that was on it. We're going to go ahead and pull that off and take it over there. Because I can only assume that the one that was on the diesel was probably a different length of some sort. And that just, cable just sits on there. Well, now hold on. One handed. Now hold on. Okay. You balance on that piece of aluminum for me. And then you just pull it. There we go. Out to fire while she goes. little plastic piece that piece is broken shoot no farm having a blast with this project is it frustrating at times yeah kind of mainly that whole shop light back there that keeps slowing me down when we get into the evening but am i learning stuff and still having a good time along the way a lot of people think this thing isn't worth the time that's fine not really up to them whether it is or not it's kind of going to be up to me a lot of people keep asking road truck or property truck mainly property but if i want to boot scoot down to the local stone yard and pick up a couple ton well by golly i want to do it i also don't want to put all this time into it and the thing only lasts me a couple years you know so if we're going to do it we're going to do it right we'll 80 percent 87 90 percent somewhere in that range so this thing actually serves us for a little bit we're going to keep going on this some more disassembly on that i've got some new parts sprinkling in already so we can kind of start the reassembly process on some of these components the only distraction will be that third function kit on the 555 which has come in from summit hydraulics but i got to get some hoses made before i can get it all hooked up and wrapped up and make a video on it and then the end of december we're going to introduce you to the new captain Cleman world headquarters oh yeah oh yeah if it if it hasn't collapsed by then though that's that's gonna be the key on that one 